Oh! Mm, 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 mm. Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with chapter 59 of Kagurabachi and oh my god, Hokazono, you done done it again, bro. Hold on, let me, let me chill out. I don't, don't want to start this video with glazing, but I'm getting that feeling once again, yo. I'm getting that, that feeling once again within my loins. My, my meat rice is something serious. This manga is special, bro. This manga right here is, is I, I ain't felt this way since JJK, but this is quickly becoming one of my top three favorite series of all time. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say that. You got a problem with it? You can talk to your mama about it. I don't really give a fuck. All right? This is this, this tenderizing my scroll. You know what I mean? So, without further ado, man, let's go ahead. Let's get this chapter breakdown. But number one, make sure you uh, like and subscribe. And number two, ooh, we got some delicious news that just aired recently. That's gonna be a separate video. <laughs> Gotta maximize that monetization. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So when we last left off of Kagurabachi, we had Chihiro being teleported to Samura by Hakuri. Chihiro saw Uraha's dead body. Samura fully unveiled his plan to kill all of the blade wielders, including the sword master, as well as himself, because he thinks that none of these blades should exist in the first place. Now, a lot of people, including myself, thought that plan was very stupid. Why are you making your emotional and religious guilt my problem? But also, the fact that you are highly underestimating the Hishaku, you don't know what they have planned. Well, I mean, uh, we'll kind of see the middle of this chapter that he, he kind of might. <laughs> he kind of could do it, actually. I don't know what I don't know. So when we start off this chapter, we have Chihiro landing in front of Samura and seeing Uraha's dead body. And Chihiro is absolutely devastated. We have never seen Chihiro in as much mental anguish as this. Even when Yuda first appeared in front of him and said, I was the one who killed your father. That was more so of despair. Chihiro is spiraling. He has no idea what he's witnessing in front of him. He is witnessing one of his heroes, possibly one of his mentors when it comes to his swordsmanship. And he he has this horrifying revelation that he had something to do with his father's death and that all of these lives that were lost were because of him. Chiro says, what possible reason could there be to let them get the enchanted blades? Samura actually has a pained expression on his face. Samura says, revenge. I heard rumors at the fortress, so that's the seventh enchanted blade. I'll handle the rest. You lay down that sword. Chihiro responds, the hell I will! If you're an enemy, then I'll kill you too! I have to! I'll do it! And in an instant, is cut down by Samura. Mm, mm. Yeah, where are all those people that said Chihiro has never lost a fight now, huh? Huh? I will tell you that this is probably Chihiro's biggest L he's taken in the series yet, but Lord Jesus. the We've never seen Chihiro like this, and people that have said that Chihiro only has the one face, or Chihiro can't express emotion, where are they at now, huh? Where are they at now? Dude, I feel so bad for this boy. He, he He's not built for this. Like, we know that Chiro is a kind-hearted kid. We know that his father raised him right. And to see him almost try to convince himself that he can kill Samura, that he can muster up the will to do it, we know that Chihiro knows that he didn't stand a chance. But him saying, oh, if you're an enemy, then I'll kill you. I have to. Oh, man. Dude, that is... I ain't gonna lie. When I first read this... I just went get the waterworks a little bit. I'm not I'm not going front. I'm not going front. But then on page eight, the off-screen demon that came in to save the day. Toka Shiba that popped out to save our boy Chihiro, man. Things was looking dire. Things was looking grim. But <laughs> don't ever be afraid to gamble on Shiba. I'm just saying, man. Listen, when him and you to fight, oh yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. I'll be there. You gonna be there, your mama gonna be there, your sister gonna be there, your granny gonna be there, your dog gonna be there. I can't wait. Ooh, we I can't wait to see what Shiba can really do. Samura goes once again into his plan to execute all of these sword bearers. Samura actually asks Shiba if he has told Shiro about anything of what they did, and he says, you know what, he's better off not knowing. And then we get a report two hours later. Contracted sword bearers, Yoji Udaha, Shiro Rokuhira, both confirmed dead. <sighs> Okay, so uh, allegedly Samura was not pulling his punches here, but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm With the end of this chapter, I'm not so convinced. So we go actually to the Hishaku's point of view and we actually see Hirohiko getting stitched up and possibly having his arm reattached with a prosthetic or just having his arms just replaced and just put back together with some sort of sorcery. We see some bandages and seals around his stump. It's funny because like the leather jean jacket looking Hishaku member, he says that I think you're lucky that Chihiro got sent to Sekutsuji. Now, I don't know how true that is. Now, N10 is a very powerful blade and people are forming this narrative that N10 
Enten is the weakest. Number one, Enten was the last blade to get made, so it's the, obviously the youngest, and Shiro does not have as much experience with it. Samura says that this is the first time in 18 years that he's actually held Tobi Mune, but the war was a long ass time, and he was using that every single day. Shiro was trained with Enten for a good three years or so, but before that, he had zero combat experience. So Chiro was still a novice. And we've seen Enten grow twice already. We've seen it go, we've seen it grow with Shred, we've seen it grow with this fight against Hirohiko where he actually blacked out the entire room and it looked like he damn near teleported and found out where Hirohiko was amongst all the paper. So Enten still has yet to evolve. He still has yet to cultivate Enten. And that's what Yuta is depending on, I think. I think that that's why he hasn't taken out Shihiro yet because he wants to see the extent of how far he can take it before he rips it from him. Basically have Shihiro do all the hard work for him. Hirohiko asks Yuta why he won't let him wield Kamiyuri, and Yuta says just in case he's coming. The Fabric Hishaku says here, you told him where we are, and then Yuta says no, we're dealing with the enchanted blade wielder who controlled the war. We see the words owl being muttered, and this spread is absolutely gorgeous. Yuta says our freedom will be cured for a little while. Now we don't have an exact idea of what this is, but from what I understand, if Samura or Toby Mune have a lock on your spirit energy, it can see where you are, possibly through buildings, like an x-ray vision or something like that. But Samura also says some things in his conversation with the Hishaku that make it think that, oh, people are saying it's omniscience or anything like that. I don't, I don't think it's anything to that extent. That seems just a little too busted, but the fact that this thing can just know exactly where you are at all times is scary. Considering the fact that Yuta says our freedom is actually going to be restricted for a little bit, so Yuta says basically we can't hide, there's, there's really no point. And Yuta actually puts some respect on Hakuri's name. He says that we actually depleted him. He would be a problem for us if he was in good shape. Now it's funny, so we actually have the revelation of a couple things here. The first thing is that Yuta and Samura have a pinky promise in the fact that, oh, Samura says you better make good on your promise, and Yuta says as long as you kill the sword bearers, we're all good. Now, here's the thing. Now, we all know that with the pole pinky promise back in the day, it means that, oh, like you had to get to cut off your pinky or you would, I believe there was somebody that said that if you broke a promise, you'd have to ingest a thousand needles or something like that in some old mythology. But I think that this is kind of lending credence to the fact that Samura is kind of like a Satan analogy. The fact that Samura is doing a, literally a deal with the devil. I mean, just look at Yuta's appearance. He, he has the suit, the jacket, but you just look him in his eyes and something's just off, right? It looks like he's trying to appeal to you. So I think it's something cool. So the, the jean jacket Fabric Hishaku, he actually says something, and it's actually very interesting. So the Fabric Hishaku says that right after Kunishige was killed, Yuta went straight to Samura's home and made a contract. He'd help kill the contract and sword bears under the following conditions. One, reveal the identities of all 10 members of the Hishaku. Two, revealed the identity of the Kamunabi insider who leaked Rokuhiro's location. And three, revealed the whereabouts of the Enchanted Blaze. Number two is a big one. Now, a lot of people, including myself, thought that Samura somehow tracked Chihiro sent to Kunishige's house. We don't know if Chi Chihiro was actually walked home by Shiba and Shiba didn't just teleport him home. But apparently, it was actually not Samura that actually had Kunishige killed. Samura was contacted after. So there is still a mole in the Kamunabi. We just don't know who it is. I don't think it's a zombie. I, 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 I don't think it's a zombie. Some people are saying that. I don't necessarily think so. I'm thinking it's like the big boss guy the, with the big beard. I think it's him or the guy with like the really long neck. But the guy with like the rosary and the flame bees that wanted to kill Chihiro right where he stood. I don't think it's him. I, that, that, that seems... I don't know. It just seems too easy. Funny enough, actually, Yuta says you've certainly gone all out killing Shihiro Rokuhira even. And Hirohiko actually gets upset. Hirohiko actually is actually really, really mad at Samura because he took away his one and only friend. That's the first friend he ever made. And he actually vows to avenge Chihiro by killing Samura one day. So, yeah, it's it really selling this idea that Hirohiko's kind of childlike. It's kind of selling home to Mahito. Oh. Uh, Tight beat a little bit, but I, I, I think it's funny. Now, Samura does say, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but you don't have to worry. He calls him a pipsqueak who is now contracted to Kamayuri, and they're actually wondering how Samura knew that. Now, that could be due to the owl ability, but I, I don't know if he's maybe deduced something. I have no idea. And the aura that resonates from Samura here is 
fucking great. Uh, with the fabric, he's Shaku saying, as far as he's concerned, the purpose of this contract to him is that he gets information on all the sword bearers and every person connected to the Hishaku in order to kill us all. And he says that the only reason he hasn't killed Hirohiko already is that if another person just becomes contracted to Kamayuri, it'll never end. Samura says if a blade is unsealed, I can detect it no matter its location. I'll be keeping an eye on you. Don't get any ideas. So actually, I was mistaken. That is Owl's ability. Again, maybe if it's tagged with Sphere Energy or something like that, I have no idea. But that is scary. And it actually sells this idea home that Samura maybe could kill everybody. He could, except the Sword Saint. The Shinuchi, we still don't know what all that thing does. I mean, it was just barely unsheathed. It killed an arena full of people and the wielder wasn't even present it just possessed a dead body or a dying body rather now yuda doesn't seem phased by anything that samura says which still sells this idea home that bro samura you have no idea what this man has going on like you might be able to detect where the blades are but you don't know what was going on in his mind you can't read his thoughts bro you think he's you don't think that as soon as he went to your house and made a contract with you he didn't have like five different contingencies come on now your plan is literally nah I'd win. What? Red Ah! He's literally smiling throughout this entire thing. Yuda has not been shook one time ever to had a conversation with him. Do you re are you really that confident in your abilities? I don't know if Samura even knows Yuda's actual true abilities. He's playing off of low information. It's so frustrating. So Yuda says it's time to play for keeps for now. And Samura says one more week. In one more week, it'll all be over. And he says that Chihiro doesn't need to become one of us. And we actually see that Chihiro is in some sort of medical facility. I don't think he's getting surgery. I think that he's in the morgue. With the way he's laid out and the way these doctors are dressed, I don't. I, I think Chihiro actually died. Now, it's entirely possible that he could be getting prepped for surgery, but he still has his jacket and his clothes on. So I don't I don't know. I, I think Samura may have some sort of ability where he, he, he I, I don't know. I, I don't want to say he can bring people back from the dead because that's, that sounds like Udaha coat. But I mean, he got Chihiro pretty good. I mean, he got he got him like almost directly down his chest too so i don't know we we will see but man poor she hero man i he didn't deserve this our boy didn't deserve this man this is horrible mm, mm, mm. but you know what this means this means it's gonna be all the sweeter when she hero bounces back and gets his lick back that's what i'm talking about man yes yes make my protagonist suffer yes 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 make my protagonist suffer I don't know what that voice was. I'm sorry. I'll never do that again. Wow. 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 What a chapter, man. Woo. I'm curious. Man, so I I, I don't know. The Toby Mune's abilities were shown to a crazy extent in this past chapter, man. So Samora looks scary. Toby Mune looks very scary, but we still don't know what the other blades do. And we have the revelation that Samora was actually the wielder that controlled the war. So maybe he controlled information flowing in and out, which is what is likely concerning the fact what Owl can allegedly do. But this is very interesting stuff. I like where the story's going. But let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about this current Kagurabachi chapter. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you guys think that Chiro's actually dead? I have no idea. I think that he actually died. Like, medical diagnosis died, and somehow he's gonna come back to life with maybe Char or something. I have no idea. But yeah, it's me, boy, Dad. If you guys think guys should join me on this video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Y'all make sure you take care of yourselves, guys, and have a good one. Peace.